Hello. So, in this video, uh, we're going to be talking about rigid translations. And in particular, we're going to be looking at the geometric view of what those are. So, there's sort of two parts here, uh, unsurprising with the two words, right? There's the rigid part and the translations part. So, let me sort of go through exactly what what this means, and again, we're doing this from a geometric viewpoint. So what that means is we're going to be talking about sort of what it looks like, not necessarily the algebra and stuff. That'll be the analy analytic viewpoint, which we'll talk about uh, in the next video. So let's say we have a just random graph of some kind of relation. Um, I'm going to be using specifically a function, although uh, these things apply a little bit beyond that. We're not going to do that in this class. So in this class, we're going to look at just the function. So let's say we have our x, y axis, right? Which again, I'm using dummy variables here because it could be different letters, right? I just I have the independent, dependent, and we have some graph. Let's say it looks like this. Okay. So when we say translation, what that means is that we're going to be moving this thing around on the grid on the xy plane, um, but specifically we're going to be moving it either left, right, or up, down. So we're going to be moving it horizontally or vertically. What we're not doing is like spinning it, for example, right? So we just want to go left, right, or up and down. So that's what the translation bit is. What the rigid part means is that when we do that, we're not going to change the curve, okay? So a way of thinking about this is if this this graph, this, this curve here, is like a piece of like cast iron or something, right? A, a piece of solid metal where we can't like stretch it, we can't like rebend it, and we can't even like turn it in place. All we can do is sort of slide it left, right, or up, down, right? So an example, which, you know, again, I'm not the best artist ever, so bear with me here. So an example would be to take this thing and maybe move it to the right so that instead of starting sort of off in this coordinate over here, maybe I start over there, right? So I could start instead over here and go the same sort of deal. Where, again, if I were a perfect artist, this curve and that curve would look identical, so that should be maybe a little bit further out. Um, but the idea is all I've done is shift it to the right some amount, yeah? Likewise, I could also move it up and down. Um, so instead of sort of starting up here, I could maybe start on the axis. So instead of there, I would start sort of below that. But again, it's going to, if I'm a perfect artist here, it'll be the same curve. So it'll go up and then down and out, which eh, kind of close. <laughs> All right, so I can go to the right. I could go down. I could go up, left. And in fact, I can do more than one of these. So I could go to the right and then go down, or go down and to the right. Either way, I could say, you know, instead of starting over here, I can move over to this axis and down to the other axis so that I start at the origin. And again, if I'm a perfect artist, it'll look like exactly the same curve. Well established that I'm not a perfect artist at this point, so it looks kind of, sort of, maybe a little similar, <laughs> but it should look exactly the same if I could draw this perfectly. Okay, so the geometric view really is this straightforward, okay? The idea is if we have some sort of graph, then we want to move, like if we have some curve here, we want to be able to move that curve left, right, or up and down. So all of these would be examples, right? We could even do both to the right, to the left, and up or down. And all of these are examples of rigid translations, right? All three of these are rigid translations of that because they move only horizontally or vertically. And if I were sort of exactly perfect with my translations and drawing, um, they would be rigid in the sense that they would be exactly the same curve in each place, okay? So that's really as simple as it is. Um, this is worth mentioning because when we get to the analytic viewpoint, it's really easy to lose track of what's happening because the analytic, if you remember, the whole thing about analytic sort of con is that it loses a lot of the big picture. This is the big picture bit, right? So it won't necessarily be as obvious what's happening graphically when we do just algebra, but that's what you want to keep in your brain when we're doing the algebra, okay? So with that, that is the end of geometric viewpoint.
we will tackle the analytic viewpoint, which is a little more involved in our next video. Okay.